how to choose a good name for your product, your website, your invention, your idea, whatever you're gonna build to take over the world. All right, this is actually very hard. I would argue that it is harder to name your company or product than your own child. The reason why is pretty straightforward. There can be more than one person with the same name. In fact, there's a call of, like John or my own name, Miguel. There's literally millions of people with the same sharing the same name, and it's not an issue. Nobody's like, "Hey, you're infringing on my name. You should be called uh, Miguel One Two Three, you know, because I was the first Miguel." Well, no, you can name your name almost whatever. So your your child, whatever you want, it's not gonna be an issue. Uh, but your company, you want it to be unique, uh, because if it's not, it could be trademarked and you could be infringing something. And, the, and, and on, the, on the other thing is that if it's, it's a common known uh, brand, not only infringe, infringing, it's going to confuse people. And there are so many millions of products out there that how do you come up with an original name? So it's hard and you're going to have to spend, literally, if you want to come up with a good name, several days. And if you have many people, uh, not many, but several people making a decision on what to choose, everybody's gonna want to choose their, you know, uh, their favorite name. So you have to come up with a strategy to come up with a good name that fits all criteria and makes everyone happy. And this is actually a very difficult process. Believe it or not, just coming up with a name <laughs> can be so hard. But there is some steps that I've uh, gathered from from other resources and, and from my own experience, which I'm gonna share with you right now on how to come up with a great name. So. First of all, you need to figure out what it makes a good name. And uh, the most common criteria I came up with is this one. It should be short. That makes sense. The longer it is, the harder to remember, the harder to spell. Easy to remember. If it's short, it's easy to remember. If it's easy to spell, it'll be easy to remember as well. Easy to pronounce in several languages. This is not as important if you only want to serve a local market but if you're going to build an online business by definition that business is already on the internet so it's international anybody can access it and uh, you don't want to restrict your ability to reach other markets in other countries so you have to think that at least it should be easy to pronounce in th three major markets right english spanish uh, maybe uh, chinese market uh, so think of names that are easy to pronounce in several languages the domain available available this is unfortunately not only is hard to come up with a great name now you may come up with a great name but there are many chances that that domain is gonna be taken and the reason why is because there is many there are many companies out there that squat names we, this this is basically this basically means they speculate by buying names in bulk thousands hundreds of thousands of them so when somebody comes with an idea and they want to buy a domain for their idea, most likely they own it and that now you're going to have to pay an order or two orders of magnitude more than a domain cost, which is usually $10. So you'll end up paying thousands of dollars easily. In my case, Grumo, which I trademarked, Grumo.com was taken. I had to pay $3,000 from a domain to a domain squatter in order to acquire it. So there you go. Uh, We'll talk about choosing a domain later because it's a whole kind of worms right there in, in order how to find a great domain and what if it's taken, what can you do? Anyways, we're going to dedicate an entire lecture to, to that. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not trademarked or similar, similar to existing brand, which I already mentioned. It's unique. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a made up word or two word combo. Uh, common names, most of them are taken, like house and dog and car. And there's no way you could find those domains available. They're worth millions of dollars. So you have to come up with a word that doesn't exist or a combination of two words that make up a word that doesn't exist. Related to what the product does, so ideally, the way it sounds or whatever keywords you're using to create that combined name are related to your product. It's SEO friendly. This means it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit, um, has to do something with the previous point is are those are people looking for those keywords and those keywords are part of your name because that gives you a boost on SEO. It's not a huge deal. 
but it's something to have in, in, in mind. And matches your brand personality. Not only it should be short, easy to remember, easy to spell out trademark, but it is also important that when every word has a, has has a specific ring ring to it, right? Does that ring match your personality? So in the case of my company, Grumo, Grumo is kind of like a fun, silly word that actually means clump in Spanish, which it actually makes a lot of sense for what we do because we kind of clump complex ideas into simple ideas by means of video. And also we have a quirky personality. And so I thought it really matches uh, what our brand, right? So think about that also when, when you're coming up with a name. As you can see, there's a lot of things to think about when you're coming up with a name. Hey, did you enjoy this video? If you wanna see more like this, just subscribe here. If you want a free gift, Click here. Yeah. Which one is going to be?